Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to session 12 of Principles of Management course. Students, we have reached to the stage where we now shall discuss on the concept of human resource planning or what we also called as, call as workforce planning. Now in the organization, it is very important that positions from clerk to CEO, they need to be filled with right kind of candidates. The managers, whether they belong to small size organization or whether they belong to a larger size organization, they have to go for certain HR functions like planning, organizing of human resource that is recruitment, selection, training and development, performance appraisal, etc. Now the important part here is that the HR manager need to fill the candidates with the positions in organization structure with right candidate at right place. Now what do we mean by this right candidate at right place? That means the competence of the human resource is as per the desired prerequisites of that position. Along with that the human resource manager or other managers in the department they have to keep a check that the motivation and morale of the employee is quite high for a longer duration of time which is an essential prerequisites. So today we will see that how managers identify that how many number of individuals they need to recruit and how they should go ahead with planning these positions. So that will be dealt in today's content. Let's move on to human resource planning content. Here we have already discussed about strategy during the previous sessions. Now let's focus on that how strategy relates to workforce planning and becomes an HR strategy for the organization member through planning of its resources that is human resource. Employment planning should reflect firm's strategic plan. Firm strategic plan for example if it is expansion then what should be the HR strategy with that? HR strategy should be having a competitive advantage through human competencies. So that means plan to enter new business maybe if we are thinking of opening up of a new unit altogether or maybe we think of reducing some kind of cost to the organization they all influence the type of position required to be filled or maybe to eliminate from the organization. Now in short term there is not much employers can do to overcome something called as recession or housing bubbles or increase or decrease in consumer spending. However, the manager should control their strategy. So knowing that the firm's plans say for example they want to expand their plans, in that case making plans for ranging up hiring in firm's international division would one of the reasons why a human resource manager will go for human resource planning. Let us now discuss a strategic context at IBM which illustrates this scenario. So this is IBM has been transitioning from supplying most computers to supplying software and consulting services. So from computers to consulting this is the addition that they have done. Therefore in terms of IBM's strategic workforce needs in 3 years this exhibit says that 22% of our workforce will be having obsolete skills. And out of 22%, 85% of them have fundamental competencies that we can build on to get them ready for skills we'll need in years from now. So that means remaining 15% will either self-select out the IBM or be let go. 
So at IBM workforce and succession planning should entail thinking through skills and competency that the firm needs. So this is the strategic part of it so as to execute the overall strategy. So at IBM for instance human resource executive reviews with finance and other executives the personal ramifications of their company's strategic plans. So students what we can say in simpler terms that what sorts of skills and competencies we will need to execute our strategic plan that is a big question every manager needs to answer. Let us now try to link employers strategy to different plans. Here the question mark is that how many people will we need in the organization and manager need to consider lot of factors to determine that and this process is called as forecasting personal needs or labor demands in the organization. Here I would like to cite an example for example a manager takes over staffing at an organization right. He may review what then he may think of having a review of demographics growth plans of the organization and also turn over history. So further after studying these parameters he may discover that projected employment has a shortfall and it was four times more than company could fill with its current recruitment process. So it is a very high shortfall that the company is facing. He then may turn to formulate a new personal plan. This new personal plan will be recruitment of few more individuals with recruitment and screening process in line. So this is how forecasting of personal needs is done in the organization. Further a firm's staffing needs reflect the demand for its products. This is very important. If the organization is having a higher demand for its products consequently the firm will require higher number of people to serve towards fulfillment of those products and services. Thus adjusted for changes the firm's plans to make it its strategic goal and for changes in turnover rate and productivity eventually. And forecasting workforce demand therefore starts with what? Starts with estimating what the demand will be for your product or services. So in short term if we may say it can be that management should be concerned with daily demand, maybe weekly demand or it can be a seasonal forecast as we know that during certain seasons production of certain products gets higher. Maybe during winters winter clothing is required more in the regions where it is heavy uh, wintry season thus the production of those seasonal products become higher resulting in demand for higher workforce during that time for that particular production. Another example can be it relates to daily track record of sale trends because for instance the mother's day is approaching so a jump in business is anticipated and there is a requirement for some additional staff in the store for the additional sales which are taking place. Another important aspect with respect to seasonal forecast is the that seasonal forecasts are critical for retailers who are contemplating end of year holiday sales. You all understand end of year there can be or end of season holiday sales are also there. So then they need to see to it that how they manage landscaping and air conditioning vendors etc. So further managers will follow industry publication and economic forecast closely for example conference boards to know how the demand is going to be with respect to their products or services and the planning process of human resource may help the manager to develop contingent staffing plans to address the potential changes in the demand. Here the basic process of forecasting personal need is first to forecast the revenues and after revenues then eliminate the size of the staff.
and however the manager must also consider certain other strategic factors as well which include projected turnover also it includes the decision to upgrade or maybe downgrade their products or services there can be some kind of financial resource consideration and also consideration in productivity change so there are several simple tools for projecting personal needs in the organization let us try to understand through this diagram how we link employee strategy with plan so employers strategic plan which is a question mark how we are going ahead with this strategy whether we are going for diversification we are adding on a new business line to our business we are integrating vertically we discussed this in the previous session what is vertical integration when we either integrate forward or backward with the suppliers or vendors so this is vertical integration we are expanding globally that is we are catering to some new region in the world with probably the same product and on what basis should we compete what should be become our reason for competitive advantage so we have to find out out of these what can be the reason for competitive advantage and once we are able to identify that the employer has to come up with functional plans like plans of we have already discussed this plans marketing production financial and human resource focusing today on human resource plans further they can be executed with the help of planning of personnel that is the human resource planning which we are discuss and at this moment training and development plans if in case we recruit someone and he is deficient in certain skills then we go for the training and development plans and compensation plans which relate to the uh, remuneration that they get because of the uh, services they render to the organization and further labor relation plans so as to have harmonious inter relationships or inter personal relationships between the different parties subordinate and superior in organization and safety and security plans for people who join the organization to give them a security of job as well as safe environment now when it comes to personal plans they then are further divided into categories like we have to forecast the requirement of personals which we were discussing just now and we have to then think of how we go about recruiting people what should be the sources and medium for recruitment and employee selection programs what should be different methods for employee selection so this is how in this broader uh diagram you can understand the importance of personal planning which plays a major role in organizational setting up and success now let us formally define human resource planning which is the process of first to identify and then to match the hr requirements and availability in order to determine the future hr activities of the organization on the basis of its overall objectives human resource planning is the first step in the process of recruitment and selection of employees and hr planning process involves the estimation of future manpower needs so here again we are doing nothing but we are forecasting that how many people would we require in organization if we plan x amount of production for tomorrow and that is again an anticipation of the top manager that we foresee a demand in our product or maybe we have identified some new need in the mind of customer so as a result we estimate x number of manpower required for the organization and then meeting those needs through labor force available to the organization so there are three basic objectives of any hr plan in organization first objective is attracting developing and retaining the efficient workforce now students when we talk about attracting developing and retaining the workforce why these three are critical or important factors for human resource planning as such human resource planning is to identify the people select them and give them job offer and let them join the organization but then what is the critical 
issue in this critical issue is this are we able to attract good competent good adjective here means that those who have right competencies high morale and right work aptitude and attitude are we able to attract them for our job that is through advertisement do we have large pool of candidates interested in our organization if not then it is a question mark and an alarming time for organization that people are not much interested in working with us so there is something major wrong and we need to rectify it once we are able to attract the right kind of candidate for our job profiles then it comes that we have to develop them develop them in terms of the skills needed or the kind of work pattern which they have to do they may be carrying some competencies when they were selected but there is high pr probability that the kind of process we are working in they need some tailor made guidance also so for initial working this development is required and not only for initial working this development is also required for later on stages when some new technology comes up in the market and the organization thinks of imbibing that technology in their work processes then also that continuous learning and development of human resource should take place and above these two attracting and developing the human resource the third point which is extremely important is retaining such a talent a talent which is a star performer for the organization is the one who is adding on most to the profitability of the organization thus it becomes very important for organization or a vital process for organization to have retention policies and how we retain these people we retain with the help of probably processes like reward systems perquisites benefits giving them transparent compensation as per the work they are doing or in the grade they are in and along with that also giving them their choice of transfers or maybe promotions as and when they deserve it moving further the second objective of human resource plan is evaluating and rewarding the performance of the individuals this goes in line with the retention process when we are able to come up with right kind of performance evaluation system this right performance evaluation system is all about finding out what the person has done as an employee of organization what contribution he has made and while he contributed what is the final outcome of that contribution that should be evaluated in fair and just manner in equitable manner and in righteous manner so this evaluation should then further give rewards to the organizational members equivalent to the performance that they have contributed the third objective is inventing and controlling hr plans and programs to optimize the hr cost now in this category what we wish the from organizational members or the hr manager is that their policies and plans should be in line with overall strategy of organization and these policies and programs should be pro employees so that they have a growth oriented career during their stay in the organization moving further however the direct and immediate purpose of human resource planning is thinking of investing forecasting planning controlling and matching the demand and supply of manpower now let us discuss broadly the hr planning is affected by two important factors here we are discussing the significance or what we also call as importance of human resource planning so under this broadly the hr planning is affected by two factors what are these two factors the factors which affect planning include the hr requirements of an organization and second is its availability whether it is within the organization or outside the organization with regard to hr requirements the role of human resource planning is basically estimating the number of people organization requires and second is the nature of people so here nature of people is not related to the psychological aspect rather the positional nature of people required in the organization so further the development such as intensified competition
technological changes, changes in labor characteristics which is important fa factor and such other changes in the environment they actually force the organization to view human resource planning both in long term as well as short term scenario. As regards to the availability of HR, the task of human resource planning is basically to scan the environment properly. So as to see that how many people are available in the requisite competence. And as such human resource planning is defined as then the process of identifying and matching the human resource requirements and its ability or availability to determine the firm's future HR based on overall objectives. But in modern day time students human resource planning is mainly concerned with one factor which is called as effective deployment of its precious human resource. It is also used as an effective means of accomplishing the business strategies and we shall now discuss the importance of HR planning in human resource management. It begins with assessing the future recruitment requirements. So identifying the future manpower requirements of an organization is the key element of human resource planning of an organization. Here estimating the future first point is estimating the future surplus or shortage. So they are very important aspect whether we are having more number of employees or we are having less number of employees in organization. Then planning the reallocation of employees. Once we have estimated we need to plan how we reallocate our employee so that we fill all the prerequisites or all the positions in the organization. And after we have done this much, finalizing the recruitment requirements for the organization. After assessing the future requirements, then comes the optimum utilization of the available human resources. Now here employees are certainly the precious assets of the organization. And human resource planning helps in what? It helps in achieving cost effectiveness by optimizing the utilization of these F assets. In contrast, when lack of human resource planning is there, often the result is under utilization of human resource which is available and thus it leads to what? It leads to increase in cost of labor. So in fact one of the primary purposes of human resource planning is to minimize the employee cost and maximize the employee efficiency and involvement. So this is what we call as optimum utilization of available resources. Next is developing training and retraining programs for the organizational members. So here HR planning facilitates organization in devising the training programs so that what it helps in? It helps in meeting the diverse needs of employees. This is because it determines the skills and competencies of personals required for the job very well. Thus we can th say that diverse needs of employee is identified well. Further human resource planning helps in predetermining the nature and duration of training program and it also helps in determining the retraining needs of the surplus employees so that they can be redeployed in some other position available in the organization. So this is the excess of employee in the organization which can be redeployed if required at different positions. Next is formulating compensation policies. 
What is compensation? Compensation is the reward that employee gets in lieu of the services that he gives to the organization. So, compensation is always considered as a key variable in implementing of an organizational competitive strategy because organizational members that is employee they join organization keeping this most important variable in mind. Thus, an organization has to necessarily ensure that its compensation plan is well aligned with the human resource plan and the organizational strategy. So, for this purpose of aligning the compensation plan with human resource plan and organizational strategy, what is important is that HR must gather some necessary information. And what information we are talking about here is about the conditions prevailing in both the external and internal environment of the organization with respect to the skill and competence of employees which are needed. So, this information is then used as one of the critical inputs for designing the compensation program. And thus it helps in determining the finally the compensation policies. Next is students determining management development programs. Now, why management development programs? We have already discussed that organization needs to enhance the capability and skill of the workforce so as to meet the changing demand of external environment. So, as a result not only for the competencies required for performing, but for tomorrow having a successor in organization who is competent enough to take up the steering wheel of the organization. So, this succession planning and career planning also is dependent upon the management development programs, how well they are executed and how in spirit the employees have taken them, imbibed the knowledge and have groomed them well to meet the needs of the organizational setup. So, for in that in long term the success of organization depends on ability of its managers to cope with changes in internal and external environment. So, it is hence the responsibility of organization to recognize the ability requirements of its manager personal in near and distant future. So, this is again a part of forecasting where the manager has to identify what kind of skill we require in near future or maybe after some long time. So, in this regard HR planning will be the central factor to all management development programs as it helps as it helps in identifying the skill and necessities of managers which are required for different timelines short medium and long term. Further next in line is shaping the future plans and strategies of the business. Here the survival capabilities of large business organizations are usually much stronger than those of small. So, here the size of the organization plays a major role when it comes to survival capabilities or we can say sustainability of any unit. In lean seasons like economic recession that is the major difference between the smaller and the larger organizations. So, quite obviously no business can develop its growth strategy independent of HR strategies and thus in this regard the HR planning process or HR planning prepares the ground for making necessary changes in HR activities including recruitment training etc to accomplish the future strategies. So, it is thus becomes a compulsion for organization to move on with what? Constantly the organization in order to achieve this they have to devise plans and strategies to enhance the business operations. Let us now see what is the human resource planning process in terms of various steps involved in it. So, this process starts first with having formulation of organizational objectives and strategies. This we have discussed in detail during the planning discussion or planning process and forecasting one. And during forecasting we have already covered scanning of the environment which includes internal, external or both environments. Once we have done these two 
we reach to the next stage that is preparation of in-house skills and competency inventory of people. So this in-house skill is of those people who are already the internal customers of organization that is the employees and then moving on to forecast that if we have skills pertaining to IT but we do not have skills pertaining to manage the production unit. So thus in that case we forecast that we need to employ people in this area and we may not employ any further in this particular field. And this HR forecasting leads to the step of need assessment. This need assessment and estimation of availability of workforce, maybe it can be within the organization or outside the organization has to be done. If it is not available within the organization, we seek for sources to employ or to sorry recruit from outside the organization. So once we are ready with the HR forecasted plan that so how many people we require and at what positions we require them, HR forecast answers these questions and then we move on to develop the HR plans and programs to hire these people, recruit them and select them. And then we go for these functions of HR recruitment or reduction. Recruitment takes place if we have deficiency of human resource. Reduction takes place if we have surplus of human resource. So I hope students you have understood this planning process. Let us discuss HR forecasting the estimate of availability of human resource in detail. So internal supply of employees, this includes internal refers to the availability of employees within the organization. So the existing employees are the main source of recruitment for any organization. Further the exact determination of HR availability is always a critical task for the manager. However, in today's time many techniques are there to measure the HR availability. So these techniques are used to measure availability of HR. And techniques for also forecasting the HR availability are available through internal sources and these techniques are first replacement charts, then we may have turnover rate. Human resource information system is also one of the methods through which we get to know the availability of resources, productivity level, overtime details that we can gather from the organization. Then we have absenteeism policies and also this includes succession planning. So this is an online software to understand the availability of HR in the organization. So the choice of specific HR technique out of these, these are the forecasting techniques and which technique shall we choose out of these will be dependent upon factors like size of organization. Then we can also see the level of competition that we are facing in this, maybe we have high competition or we may not have any competition or maybe it can be a moderate one. Then also how the nature of external environment is at that point in time. Characteristics of labor market also come into picture or this can be one of the variable to choose or factor which dictates us to choose which technique is more appropriate. Finally, the economic conditions do play a major role in finalizing which strategy shall we go ahead with for HR forecasting. For external supply of human resources, so external supply we have to take them from outside the organization. So here the organizations get a major source of their supplies from external sources that is these external sources are dependent again on the 
size and characteristic of the labor market. Now while determining the HR availability from external sources, there are certain factors for organization to consider like in the case of internal there were factors, in external also there are certain factors like demographic changes which are taking place in lifestyle of people, technological developments by now you understand its relevance and importance, labor characteristics and trends of merger and acquisition. If that is taking place again it becomes important for organization member to see whether people are available outside the organization or not. Government rules and regulations also play a vital role in deciding about the labor characteristics. If attitude of union members need to be considered before we go for external factors for identifying the human resource from outside. Then there can be income tax rates, what are the prevailing one, labor mobility to be studied well before we go for identifying the external supply of human resources. So the availability of human resource outside the organization will depend on nature and reputation of industry in general and the organization in particular. So if the industry is a well sought industry, you may have large number of candidates interested in your organization to work. But if in case it is not an industry which offers a lucrative profile to people, probably that is not much sought after industry. So there can be less number of people who are attracted to apply for those positions. But lately globalization of business has encouraged organizations to meet their HR demands even through employee located across the nations. So we can go outside our state boundary or outside probably the nation's boundary to find out specific individuals who can be assets for the organization we are looking forward to get the HR for. So on the basis of outcome of HR forecasting, we have just now understood how we can forecast HR through both internal supply and external supply. So on the basis of the outcome of HR forecasting, an organization will de determine its future HR activities and following are the four scenarios which are possible during HR forecasting of employee availability. What will be then these four scenarios are basically the outcomes outcomes of HR forecasting. So these outcomes can be first getting the sufficient number of employees from internal sources. So this is the first thing and every organization wants that their employees should get due promotions and recognition which can make the employee feel highly committed and motivated towards organization. So if the sufficient number of employees we get from internal resources that's a wonderful situation. The second scenario can be that we are not able to extract internal resources and we do not have sufficient number there. So then we can get the members from the external sources and which equally play an important role because here we are generating employment opportunities for those who are outside in the society. The third scenario can be we have combined both the sources of internal and external sources to get the adequate number of employees for our organization. Now the, these three are tolerable outcomes of HR forecast and every organization strives that we must have either or or of these resources or these outcomes. But failing to get the required number of suitable employees from these sources is a troubled situation for organization and because of this probably the organization is not able to match up to the production demands or maybe launch a new product or maybe bring in changes into existing technologies. So this needs to be addressed and how this can be addressed wherein the intervention of government is required to come up with new schools or training schools or maybe you can say training facilities for the youngsters in society so that they get groomed themselves into the required skills which are getting deficient in the industrial setup. Next comes development of HR plans and programs. So now we have forecasted 
Once the organization completes the process of HR requirements and availability, in the previous slide we understood that after forecasting we are able to identify the requirement and availability of human resources. So the next step in comparison here is the HR requirements and they are compared with HR availability of labor shortage and labor surplus. So comparisons of HR availability with HR requirement help the organization to determine the viability of strategic business plans. The outcome of such comparisons would be either recruitment of more employees or reduction of existing workforce depending upon what is the scenario surplus or shortage. So in case of shortage of labor, what do we go for? So when there are shortages of labor, we go for processes like recruitment and selection, training and development and placement of employees at the right place. While in the other scenario, when the surplus of employee is there, then we go for employee reduction program like we may freeze the hiring process. We may go for downsizing or maybe we introduce the voluntary retirement scheme so that employees are also benefited and the organization also gets lowers its burden of having extra employees on board. We can go for reduced working hours also and restrict the overtime so as to save cost and have a reduction in the existing workforce. Also it is a difficult task for an organization to properly respond to situation arising out of HR forecasting process. Because in surplus scenario an organization may resort for short term measures like downsizing or reduced work hours etc. But however in shorted scenario the firm may require long range strategic responses like training and development to tackle the situation. So therefore the organization should come up with necessary HR policies and programs to deal with the situations whether they are going for training and development or they are going for downsizing or reduced work hours. Next students is the tools for human resource planning. Now. One of the most important tools for human resource planning is job analysis. So before we go on to study job analysis from the theoretical perspective, if I explain it in simple terms, job analysis is identifying different jobs which are there in organization structure which we have identified as a position which we need to create and we have to employ people on that position. Now we have to scrutinize what are the requisites for this job. So this job analysis will be on the basis of describing the job that is various roles and responsibilities that are to be done in this job and essential qualifications which are required by any person who is employed at that position needs to be identified at this stage. So the process of identifying the essential requirements for a particular job along with the roles and responsibilities that the job has to perform is called as job analysis. Let us study this concept of job analysis in detail. Job analysis is the process of gathering relevant information about various aspects of job and is concerned with the identification of tasks required to be performed as a part of the job. So systematically approaches it approaches the task of defining role, conditions of job, context of job, also what performance standards will be used and responsibilities of job. It also helps in establishing something called as jobs worth to an organization. So in other words, it tells us what value this job is going to create to the organization. What is the contribution this job will give to achieve overall plan objective, overall goals of the organization. It also assists the organizational resource management and strategy formulation process to achieve business goals and objectives very effectively. 
देर इज अनदर कॉन्सेप्ट विच इज कॉल्ड एज जॉब रिलेटेडनेस जॉब एनालिसिस ऑल्सो एस्टेब्लिश दिस जॉब रिलेटेडनेस विच इज अ क्रूशियल इनपुट फॉर एच आर डिसीजन इन्वॉल्विंग वेरियस एच आर फंक्शन लाइक रिक्रूटमेंट सिलेक्शन कॉम्पनसेशन हेल्थ एंड सेफ्टी एक्सेट्रा जॉब एनालिसिस हेल्प्स इन डेवलपिंग अ जॉब प्रोफाइल फॉर ईच जॉब एंड एक्ट्स एज द बेसिस फॉर डेवलपिंग जॉब डिस्क्रिप्शन एंड स्पेसिफिकेशन दिस इज वॉट वी कॉल एज कॉम्पोनेंट्स ऑफ जॉब एनालिसिस job description and job specification it helps in identifying the appropriate job for each employee you know so that the skill and knowledge of these employees are effectively utilized it also facilitates the process of understanding the important of environmental changes in individual jobs and also assist the organization in identifying and removing unnecessary skills or other unwanted requirement from the job which actually helps in simplifying the eligibility for the job and it also ensures the equal opportunity for all who are in the employment and finally it enables the organization to attempt for job improvements and how they can go for job improvements through job reengineering and something called as job enlargement adding on more responsibilities to the job so that it gives higher morale and motivation to the employees through job reengineering and job enlargement this leads to job satisfaction of employees as well let's quickly see the job analysis process students so this process includes let's now study what are different steps in job analysis process which starts with first determining the purpose of job analysis so the first step of job analysis process is to determine the end use of job analysis how is it going to be utilized by the organization so certainly job analysis students has very big relevance for almost all hr activities of the firm but however organization may conduct job analysis for specific purposes like for hiring so that can be the main purpose of job analysis or maybe for determining the remuneration so these can be the purposes for a instance job analysis may emphasize on identifying information relating to physical hazards in the job or maybe some kind of job difficulties also or what kind of work environment is there for those who work on shop floor where fumes occur maybe in the chemical setup there are lot of physical uh, hazards which relate to it even not for the shop floor worker for people who are working in it industry job difficulties are that continuously they have to sit and probably they have to trouble their back and spinal uh, gesture which may eventually land up in some kind of inflammation and pain so job hazards job difficulties and work environment culture is also all determined through the through the job analysis process and this is the major purpose of job analysis step so job analysis will enable the firm to determine the nature and type of data to be collected techniques to be adopted for data collection and further analysis after determining the purpose of job analysis next is for data gathering so here the background information about the job is gathered it is essential for an organization to review the background information about job and to know its relative importance to the organization relative importance here means that how a particular job in the organizational hierarchy if this is the organizational hierarchy and these are different positions how this particular position relates to this position or this position this is the relative importance of the jobs so here the job analysis should focus on identifying information relating to all important elements of the job when we talk about all important elements of the job this information can be gathered with the help of 
something called as organizational chart so this is what i have tried to draw here also there are other tools like process chart and job classification to know this the third step is choosing the representative jobs for analysis so we cannot do analysis of all jobs so we have to identify a job which is a representative job generally organization they choose few jobs for analysis rather than analyzing the all jobs and thus it is done because many jobs are of similar nature and characteristics so firm may find it quite time consuming or maybe costly as well thus they go for representative jobs next is collection of relevant information so information pertaining to various aspects of job is collected various aspects here include that it can be duties of the job responsibilities of the job along with duties and responsibility what is the authority which is vested in that position is important where the job is accountable so accountability of the job content of the job also and most importantly what is the desired employee behavior from that job this all information is collected and and how these things are collected these include methods such as structured and open ended questionnaires interviews task inventories checklist and observation they are used to collect the data pertaining to all the information related to job then comes review of gathered information we have gathered lot of information in the previous step through various methods now we have to review that information to give it a meaning so after the collected information is analyzed result of analysis is reviewed for its accuracy and generally the specific job holders and their immediate supervisors do this process of reviewing the information which has been gathered and then the opinion of the employees performing this job is taken to ascertain its accuracy and correctness and the completeness of job analysis process so in this case employees and supervisor they point out any incompleteness or any kind of discrepancy they have seen in the report or supplementary information to be collected for further analysis and finally development of job description and specification takes place so this is the final stage of job analysis in this these two essential documents of job description and analysis they complete the report for job analysis and they give a detailed overview of what is to be what is expected from the individual so under job description it provides the information as we have already discussed about the title of the job code of job department or division of job all these things are through job description job description title easily identifies the nature of job and its position through the title we can get to know where the person is placed also job description provides information on location of the job in organizational structure and the immediate supervisor's title then comes job after identification in job description we have job summary so this section provides a brief review of the con content of the job and it also mentions the major functions of the job so job summary could also include the information on employees views about the role and importance of job and its job holders in an overall context job summary contains a brief description of objectives position objectives of the position results expected from the employee and besides information on degree of freedom available to each job holder now it the degree of freedom probably will increase in as we go in higher in the hierarchy then comes jobs relationship this section indicates employees relationship with other jobs where we talked about the relative importance of jobs who is superior who is subordinate all these are identified in the job relationships after that we identify the job duties and responsibilities so major duties which are to be performed and 
the average time required for performing each duty is discussed in this scenario. So, it will be ideal to complete the description of duties and responsibilities within few sentences so that it is not it is not ambiguous and the employee knows his role very well. So, this is a very sample uh, performer for job specification statement where you can see the job title we can write alternate title purpose of job any code number title of the holder job location type of job provide details whether it is full time part time regular ad hoc etc department where the job is placed reporting authority that is the superior immediate superior and number of staff under the post of that particular job. Also job summary duties authorities identified working conditions required are detailed here technical requirements of the job skills required for the job and experience required for the job is also mentioned. After job description we now discuss job specification which is a document that specifies the minimum acceptable qualities required for a person to complete. Now students you are also studying some course that is why you are listening to this session. So, tomorrow you intend to join some organization at a some position after this course is completed. So, what is that? That is going to be the job specification. Your qualification today that you will earn out of understanding these sessions or maybe many more courses will become job specification for you for tomorrow. So, this is the minimum acceptable qualities required. Job specification usually contains details of employee characteristics and qualifications which are essential for the job. The important components of job specification include first what is the level of education and training that an individual has gained or not gained rather what is essentially required minimum training and minimum education then comes the minimum required experience then the desired and essential skills and competencies that the person must know how to perform in certain jobs physical strength and stamina is very important you know here it can be jobs related to probably defense services or maybe police services or maybe something which is related to such areas where this physical strength and stamina is important prerequisite for the job holder. Then stress coping up abilities are also required especially for the higher positions in the organization. One must have the stress coping up ability very well and then comes the special needs if any for any specific job. So, this is a performer as we discuss performer for specification this performer students you can quickly see that it tells about job description about department education experience work based skill competencies behavioral skill and talents which are required. So, summary of today's session includes that we have to eventually come up with HR plans and policies for recruitment selection HR development compensation management and staffing etc which is not necessarily your course of study but these are the HR outcomes and how we reach to this is with the help of need of HR resources that is quantity and skill of people this is what we were concerned today which is called as the HR plan and available financial resources which can help to reach to the scenario of what is the quantity of people and skill we require. This is in turn governed with the help of strategy of organization and culture of organization based on this we answer questions to how many people we need in organization and competitive and financial environment and current organizational situation with, with respect to financial status guides us what is our financial stability or economic strength. So, having said that we reach to the conclusion that typically HR planning has certain responsibilities for managers. So, these are the responsibilities of managers identifying the supply and demand need of organization review and discuss the HR plan integrate the HR plan with departmental plan monitor HR plan to identify changes needed and finally review the employee succession plans. Students this is the bibliography I have referred to for this session in case you wish to go deeper into the content you may refer to these books for your better understanding. 
So here I conclude the session on human resource planning and I believe that you people have understood the concept very well and this is all from my side for session 12, thank you.